they're constantly coming in here messing with food I cook. And that's what they do. You coming in here fucking with my food. And I'm sick of that shit. I'm, that's why I make these videos. They've been doing that since I stayed in this building. They like to play with the Lowry seasonings and my spices. I'll come home and get ready to use one and it's like like this one. It's caked. It's caked in there. There were people getting in my car all day. They were, these were African American guys, males. They would get in the car from their job, I was picking them up, smelling like spices. And see, when they do shit like that, that means uh, somebody to mess with something in here. They're constantly coming in here, messing with food I cook. And that's what they do. You coming in here fucking with my food. And I'm sick of that shit. I'm, that's why I make these videos. Because I'm putting the blame where the blame is due. It's on the building where I reside as a resident. I'm not changing those spices. I'm not doing shit to the spices. And this building is not doing anything to stop whoever it is coming here fucking with the goddamn spices. So, that's why I make these videos. It's the wrong fucked up building to move in. A building I gotta keep a chair outside the door when I'm sleeping in here at night. When I leave out of here every day, I know this motherfucker coming in here. Cutting the camera off. Coming in here doing whatever. Fucking with spices. And then these, why do these outside motherfuckers know what the hell going on inside my motherfucking apartment? Is it the spices? Is something they put in the spices that I've been using on my food that caused me to be fat? Cause me my stomach to feel like it's bloated. Cause the weight gain. What is, why is your dumb ass coming in here fucking with spices? This is the ignorance shit I've ever seen going on in this state in my life. I'm tired of you coming here fucking with food. I'm tired of you coming in here fucking with spices. I'm tired of you coming in here fucking with my shit. This is the ignorance bastard I've seen for my life. And I wish I could catch this bitch. I don't know how he keep bypassing the security camera. We need to investigate Google to find out why these motherfuckers are never on camera. But this motherfucker coming up here playing with spices. And I'm tired of living up and paying rent in these motherfucking bitch ass places. Man, I want to know who is coming up into this lady's apartment, man. Who keep messing with this lady's stuff, man? Who keep messing with the silverware? Now they messing with the spices. Who's messing with this young lady's stuff? Her meat, her workout equipment. Who's messing with this young lady's stuff? And why the camera is not working? Inquiring minds want to know. Welcome back, everybody, to the channel. Thank you for listening. Shout out to our girl, Dirty Trucking. Once again, she is going through it. She is going through it, man. And that's why she keeps making these entertaining videos so that everybody knows that she have an issue with someone keeps coming into her apartment. I don't know who that person is, but it seems as though that same person is following her from apartment to apartment and they keep doing the same thing. They just messing with her stuff and she's noticing every little thing that's being messed with. Now it's the spices. Don't know why would somebody go in there and mess with her spices. That's beyond me, but hey, bro, whoever you are, man, you need to, you need to leave this young lady alone. Shout out to Dirty Trucking. Make sure you guys go over there and check out her channel dirty trucking she used to drive trucks but now she's an uber driver she has stories of her uber issues stories of a company called warren truck plant stories chase bank they're all entertaining i'm telling you i'm a fan i've been a fan and you guys should go over there and check out her channel make sure you subscribe to her channel coming in here doing something because I would wake up out of a deep sleep just groggy every now and then and recently I hadn't had that happen in a long time but recently the past couple of days I woke up real groggy and when that happens that's somebody trying to get in the apartment they like to steal my stuff out of this apartment and for years they've always been stealing silverware and stuff like that out of, out of my apartment so I decided this is a new set that I bought since I've been in this apartment. It's probably maybe, I want to say, I don't know, 
maybe a little less than a year old, maybe a year old. Yeah, I went ahead and went and replaced all my silverware. So my last set, they stole a knife out of. Uh, they did that over the Alden Towers. I just got this. And you know, silverware comes a set of four. Big little spoon, butter knife, big fork, little fork. So I was a set of four. So I decided to go in the drawer and pull all my silverware out to see if any missing. And they are. I got three big forks when it should be four. And I got three little for forks when it should be four. I haven't thrown any in the garbage. I don't throw my silverware in the garbage. And this is a new set, newer set. I just recently got these. So now I'm going to throw these out and get another replacement set. So who's taking the forks? I got three forks, three big forks, three little forks. I got four big spoons, four little spoons. Four knives, but I ain't got four little forks, four big forks. This motherfucker has always been messing with my silverware, my pots, my dishes, my knives, stealing Brillo pans. Every apartment. I don't know what the fuck is this problem. Why do you come and take silverware? I hope you choke on that shit. Stay the fuck out of my apartment. Taking my shit. I'm going to get another set. Still one of them damn chains. This what happened to my money when I buy shit to put in my apartment. That stankin' brings his ass in here taking my goddamn shit. And that motherfucker, just how bad. I hate the, the fact that knowing that your motherfucking ass is walking your ass up in my shit. And I can't do nothing about it. When I catch your ass, I'm gonna let you know I don't want you in my shit. I don't want you touching my shit. I don't want you stealing my shit. I wanna do this, bitch. Stay the fuck out of my apartment. Taking my shit. This my money you stealing. I never knew that Dirty Trucking went down to Illinois to try out for a black ops company. I never knew that. I never knew that. And I've been following this young lady for quite a while. I knew about her other trucking adventures. She was a container driver. She worked for Western Express and a couple of other companies. But I never knew that she tried out for a black ops company called Beverly Freight. So when I came across her video and I checked it out, I was like, hmm, that sounds like the same issues that people is going through to today with with people going down to Chicagoland companies and, and getting told one thing, but getting treated a different way. Here's Dirty Trucking Story of Beverly Free. No more wasting time. Let's get it. Hold on. Hello. I want to share my trucking experience I just had because the recruiters and the people that get us to come to their jobs are misleading the drivers. I don't understand why you go through the whole charade telling the drivers all this lovely bullshit and then when we get there, we start noticing what you said is not coming into play. The most recent one and the most horrific one, the most embarrassing trucking company I've ever in my life tried to attempt to go to. Beverly Freight, located in Alsip, Illinois. This company website advertises you can make big money. They advertise they offer used new trucks. They claim you can make a shitload of money. But after you pay out all these startup fees, $2,430 for your red truck registration, and $450 for a tablet, and so on and so on. So you really won't be seeing any money for almost three, pretty much three to four, a month rolling. You immediately starting to pay these ridiculous ass fees that after I totaled them up, come to $3,413 a week that you got to pay. So you rolling making money off the loads, but it's going back to them and these fees and shit for the truck before you start seeing a profit. I don't know who regulates the lease purchase in trucking, but this whole program needs to be overhauled. This program is designed for drivers to fail. You paying out ridiculous money to get little money, but then the company talks to you like that's good money. No, it's not. No, it's not. When you're on percentage, they cheat you out the load pays. This company pays you by the load. They were skimming off the loads, which is possible because they never disclose fully the true amount of the load. I don't care how much you ask. You just never tell you. You just They just tell you this amount and this is what you get of this amount. That needs to be full disclosure. Beverly Freight. 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 They lured me out of Detroit. It took a long time for me to make a decision to go there because I was kind of leery of the company of that kind of money they talking about they can make. And then you had to invest all this money off the bat. Get a, you had to start paying all this money off the bat to get rolling. 
they make you pay for your own way there. So my way was short. Took a Greyhound, got over there. It's too late to go to the office and try to get the paperwork filled out and get started. Well, they said, well, if you do your drug screen before you go, we can have that ready. That could be back in 24 hours. That's what they said. Tuesday, I called. They said it wasn't back yet. Then I asked them, after getting there, how long would it take to get me rolling? They said, once you get here, get the paperwork going, you go pick your truck, it'll be that day. Okay, so I booked me a bus. Went on up to Alsip, Illinois. I get there, they put me in a, a Motel 6. Motel 6 decides that my first room they put me in, the tub was hideous. I walked immediately out that room and requested another room. The next room was decent. Okay, so I get me a good night's sleep. Get up the next morning. Now, they Ubered me over there. They, they, everything is about Uber. You got to get an Uber. They Uber you from the, the Greyhound in Chicago over to the motel. Then they Uber you from the motel to their office. Okay, I get to the office. Okay, everything seems friendly. It's a small company, and, and there's a brick building on the second floor. Small company. They run by foreigners. I don't know the background. So, that didn't stop me from going. I said, well, hell, they seem nice. If you're being honest with me, okay, then I'm going to try, try your company. Several email communications with the recruiter. Then I talked to the guy. This guy tells me about the trucks. Uh, I said, I wanted the Kenworth that you had on there. He said, no, no, we have 2020 Freightliner Cascadias. I said, but your fire is advertised that you have newer trucks. The Kenworth, and I see a Peterbilt on here. Oh, so I have 2020 Freightliner Cascadias. Yeah, then he said something about, well, well you can get here and, and, and drive the Freightliner for three weeks and I'll get you a new truck. That's what he said. When you look at their stuff and the flyers, when you click on it, there's one picture in the flyer where it looks like they have a fence line full of newer looking Freightliners. And what I saw when I got there, scam. After filling out my application, she said, well, while I process this, uh, we're going to Uber you over to the yard where the truck is. That was another, should have been, all this shit should have been a red flag. Because this company, to get you there, they ask online to send your social security card, medical card, driver's license claiming they checking that, say everything okay. They don't have you fill out an app or nothing till you get there. And then they told me the trucks were right out back of the building. No, they had a few trucks out back of the building I arrived at, but the trucks is over at a truck repair center, truck plaza. So I get dropped off there by an Uber. I don't see, I'm immediately looking for this fence line full of freight line of trucks, I don't see it. So the Uber driver, who's another foreign guy, barely could speak English, he said he was gonna wait to make sure this is the right place. I go in and talk to one of the shop mechanics. This guy immediately comes, I tell him I'm from Beverly Freight. I was dropped off here by Uber to come pick a truck. This guy immediately gets defensive. So I have nothing to do with that. They're a separate company. We just fix trucks here. I said, okay, but where are the trucks? He said, the outside, out back. I'm walking around the yard. I don't see any sign that says Beverly Freight. I get to the back. I finally see a truck that says Beverly Freight. It's a white Kenworth that has been hit. And I look around further, I don't see any more Beverly Freight. So, I walk over to the other fence, directly in the back of the garage. I see two white trucks. I walk up on the side up, okay, that gas sign say Beverly Freight. One of the trucks apparently came from Quality. That truck is in inoperable condition. The second truck next to it, it looked decent, newer tires, but I don't know if that was somebody's truck or what was wrong with it. It was just sitting there. Okay, you let me get on the bus saying you had all the newer trucks. I see junk. I called Beverly Freight. I said, where are your trucks? I don't see any trucks. She said there should be a sign in the yard that says Beverly Freight. There's no sign anywhere. So she calls the mechanic. As I walk back in, the mechanic's on the phone. He said, now he's telling me this truck is in the shop. It should be truck number nine something something something. I said, so now you are signing me a truck. You dropped me off here in the cold at a goddamn truck repair shop to pick a truck that I can't pick or look at because it's up in the goddamn shop. So, now I'm highly upset and pissed off, telling them you misled me. So now they get the guy back on the phone, George, the one that told me all this information about the trucks. I'm standing out back in the cold, saying where your trucks at. Now he wants to tell me that he told me he had one Cascadia Freightliner. No, you didn't. You said I have 2020s. And I said your flyer doesn't say you have one truck. Everything from the start of the conversation with this company was a lie. At some point, it got to the point where they act like they were getting intolerant of answering my questions. I'm a driver about to go get indebted to you for a shitload of money trying to drive your trucks and get started. So, you were supposed to answer my questions. You were trying to recruit me there. So now, me and this guy is going back and forth. 
I said, you drop me off here in the goddamn cold. They drop me off with an Uber in the cold, a pickup truck that I can't pick. I can't get in and crank it up. I can't look at the truck. The goddamn truck is in the damn shop. I can't even walk in the garage and look at it. So now the guy says, yo, yo, you gonna argue with me? I said, you goddamn right. You lured me from my home of Detroit, made me pay for, use my last money. I can't even pay my rent. I'm going down here trying to find me a job, use my last money to get a bus over there. And this was some bullshit. You have no trucks to pick from. You had one truck. You don't assign me a truck. I'm supposed to pick my truck. So, he said, nah, I don't want to hire. I don't want to hire. I said, well, I tell you what. You're going to get me back home. You drop me off here in an Uber. I paid my bus fare to get here. He said, no. So, he's going to leave me stranded. So, what I did was, I called. I said, well, you're going to leave me stranded. I said, okay. All right. You think this is a game? I'm going to show you this ain't no game. So, I called the Alship police. The police officer arrived. The first officer arrived. He asked me what happened. I explained the story. He said, uh, what you want me to do about it? I said, you need to do something. I said, you allow just the police here. I said, you allow this to go on in your state? They're luring drivers here on false pretenses. And now you're trying to leave me stranded here. He said, where's your belongings? He thought it was in the shop. I said, no, it's not in the shop. It's back at their office. So while I was talking to him, another officer arrived, a female officer. So she said, tell me what's going on. I told her what happened. She said, this is terrible. Apparently they've heard of, uh, apparently this goes on in Illinois in that area with, with, a, with trucking companies. So we walk into the building because I told him I need to verify that truck is in the, in the shop. So the officer didn't want me to go step out there in the, on the shop floor. So she did herself. She looked through the, she asked the guy where the truck is in the shop. The mechanic comes out, it's in the shop. She peeks through the window to see. She said, I see, I see some Beverly trucks. There's three white ones and one black. So the mechanic, she, and they, the officers asked the mechanic, is any of those trucks in ready condition for her to pick from? The mechanic said, no, no, no. No. So this company dropped me off in the cold for some trucks they knew was in the shop, wasn't ready to roll, and I couldn't pick from. And didn't want to get an attitude with me because now I'm upset and pissed off that I just realized this was some bullshit. So the police drove me back to their office. I told them that's where my belongings were. So we went upstairs, me and both of the officers. They saw the two, young, young, the two ladies that was at the desk that works for this company, and I proceeded to tell them why I called the police on you, on them. I said, you lured me here on false pretenses, made believe you had new and newer and used trucks, more than one to pick from, ready and available out in the yard. I get here, I see junk and no trucks, the trucks in the shop, not ready to go. You drop me off in the cold, the guy gets upset with me, now tells me he don't want to hire me, and tried to strand me. In the, out in Alsip, Illinois, in that truck yard. That's why the police is standing here. So, one of the ladies exclaimed that she worked for safety, tried to say, you can't get mad at us. So the male police officer stopped her. He said, you work for this company. He let her know their responsibility. You're just as responsible as the owner of the company. You are working for this company. You are implementing the orders of that owner to do this to people. You work for the company, so you are just as responsible. Because the officers asked where the Greyhound was that I came from. It was in Chicago. They had to Uber me from there. So the get there was out of their jurisdiction. So they said they couldn't drive me back that far because they were going to drive me back to the Greyhound. But they can't go that far. So at this point, what do you want done? So the officer said she's uh, she does obviously does not want to work here. So what she's asking is, can you get her an Uber back to the Greyhound and a bus ticket home? They both said, yes, yes, we can do that. So the officer stood there while they made those arrangements. And after they made the arrangements, I handed me the paper with my bus ticket. The officers were telling me that they see this quite often. The, the female officer told me of another company called Express. Uh, apparently that company had done the same thing where they had to respond to a driver being put out of his truck, where they had to come get a police van and load all this guy, this driver's stuff in their van, drop him off at the Motel 6 while this guy calls his dad to come get him. This lease purchase stuff, this stuff is going on with these trucking companies, misleading drivers. You're asking specific questions and they're, they're sugarcoating it. They're lying to you to get you there. And then after you get there, you either end up stranded, pissed off, wasted your time, or forced to have to accept this position because now you're in a dire need because you have no income. And I'm tired of this going on in trucking. The trucking industry needs to be overhauled. This lease purchase needs to be reevaluated or eliminated entirely.